Welcome to Bioenergetic Basics with me, Danny Roddy, a podcast where we talk about the practical application of a lot of things that we talk about in the Generative Energy podcast. My specific point of view about interpreting uh, a vast amount of Ray's work and applying it to myself and then talking to other people. And so t- take the good, leave the bad. And uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so uh, before we get into the pharmaceutical safe antibiotics, I want to mention a few other intestinal disinfectants. So obviously the foods, the bamboo shoots, the carrot, the mushrooms, those are all uh, antibiotic f- foods that can be used. And they can even be made like the carrot salad where a person adds some olive oil and some vinegar that doesn't have additives into it to try to approach their intestine and stimulate it if they have constipation or decrease the bacteria if they have uh, bacterial overgrowth. And those are free, so a person can just use them. And for what it's worth, I hear way, me- uh, way better stories about the mushrooms uh, for people with serious intestinal problems. And so you cook them for a few hours, then you can blend them, uh, or not really blend them, like grind them to a sm- smaller pieces, and then add olive oil and some d- uh, distilled white vinegar, and that tends to work pretty well. And so I wouldn't discount those if a person has never tried them, and uh, but they can work well. And so second, uh, types of intestinal disinfectants, which are not pharma antibiotics, are things like megasporbiotic or biosporin, which contains uh, B. subtilis and B. lichenoformis, which are types of bacteria that can produce antibiotics in the intestine. Then a fluoracyst or fluorophage, which contains bacteriophages, which are types of, I think, viruses that can attack bacteria. And then also uh, flowers of sulfur or sublime sulfur, which is like an old timer remedy to like fungal problems and I think parasites too. So that's uh, good to have on hand. And the, the product uh, I have the most experience with is from Humco, H-U-M-C-O. Okay, so when would a person need uh, like additional support? Uh, would they need it when they're constipated or when they have diarrhea? And so in my general experience, people that have constipation tend to have hypothyroidism or, or they have, tend to be very low thyroid. And this is not medical advice. <laughs> Uh, they, they tend to be very low thyroid. They tend to have low uh, pulses, low temperatures. And they, they, I think a good approach is trying to get the thyroid function up and doing that in any way possible. And when those types of people take antibiotics, I don't think they notice that much. It's not like some revelatory thing for them. But I was just reading a paper pr- probably a few weeks ago on uh, the macrolide family of antibiotics being helpful for constipation. So that was completely unknown to me. And so a person might want to try that. Uh, so that's like erythromycin or clarithromycin or neomycin or, or uh, azithromycin. And I didn't know that. And so I haven't really been thinking about that. And so that might be help for, f- helpful for constipation. But generally, things like cascara and aspirin and thyroid hormone and f- solving those problems would be really valuable, I think. So for diarrhea, I think it's a completely different story. If a person is taking measures to clean up their nutrition, not eat out at restaurants, uh, it, it, being really choosy with their supplements, not taking things with MCT oil or other additives that they're kind of foreign, don't know what's going on. And if and they're having gas and dental problems and sleep problems, which are all pretty much hallmarks of um, a bacterial overgrowth or, or something else. That in that situation, I probably would investigate uh, phar- pharma antibiotics if the other things we talked about didn't work. So that that's like penicillin VK or amoxicillin or erythromycin, clarithromycin, neomycin, azithromycin, or the tetracyclines like tetracycline, doxycycline, or minocycline. And if I left out any of those, it's because I've never tried them. And so those I feel relatively comfortable talking about because I've tried all of those, but. Um, Okay, so and then what would the dose be? So Ray was a lot different than a lot of people that he uh, talked about way lower doses. So for the penicillins and the macrolides, in general, he used to say something about 30 to like maximum 250. Uh, And for context, like a doctor might prescribe somebody 500 milligrams four times per day, where Ray was saying a person could get away with 50 milligrams four times per day, like way, way less. And uh, for the doxycycline and minocycline, uh, the, the doses are far less. So maybe I, I think it's like 25 milligrams twice a day or 50 milligrams twice a day or something like that because they're fat soluble. They absorb better. And then tetracycline is different. I think you need similar doses to the penicillins and the macrolides, like 100 or 200 milligrams 
and it tastes absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, erythromycin tastes really bad as well. So, um, and while we're on the topic, it, it, I think it's good practice to let these things dissolve in your mouth. So not just to put the pill in and swallow it. I, I think that can irritate the gut. It can create its own irritation. And so I would try to kind of d dilute it with saliva and then swallow it or even put some carrot in your mouth or something and then take it that way. And that might actually help it work better by bringing it to the large intestine. And then uh, a, cr a critical thing when a person's taking antibiotics is using vitamin K. And I have a quote from Constance R. Martin from Endocrine Physiology 1985. And she talks about how the bacteria make vitamin K and using antibiotics can wipe it out and cause a deficiency. And I think I've actually done that to myself multiple times. This is kind of a, a random one, but I swear that antibiotics can lower a person's blood sugar. So I probably wouldn't take it and then like go to bed. Uh, you might wake up in the middle of the night feeling really bad, uh, ravenous, but I haven't heard anybody ever say that before. I haven't seen any research on it, but I have felt it many times. And so I'm just throwing that out there. And then t timetable, if a person had a legit infection, uh, we did ask Ray this on one of the last Gen of Energies, and he said he had no problem with the typical two to three weeks, and that if a person stopped too early, they might uh, be leaving spores or something of the bacteria. It was something similar to that. I'd have to find it and go listen to it again. But um, he, he, from what I remember, he had no issue with that. But he did say for himself that just using a few doses for a few days could work pretty well. And uh, so, so again, there's probably lots of room for uh, ex experimenting here. And in fact, on one of the, the old generative energies, even before the live streams, I asked Ray, I was like, how do you know if you need an antibiotic? And he told me you just have to experiment. <laughs> and I think the idea is that endotoxin is involved in so many pathological problems that it's hard to believe that most people wouldn't benefit from antibiotics at some point, you know? Uh, and while just while I'm thinking of it, I, I often get asked about uh, putting these on some type of schedule, like, oh, every month I'll take them uh, on this day. And I, I do think that's probably a bad idea because uh, antibiotics do kill healthy cells. And so having them on some schedule I don't think is uh, warranted. And a person should just go by symptoms and not not some arbitrary schedule that they've laid out. So uh, unless I think of it during this sentence, I, I think that was basically everything. So using the foods, trying kind of the second line uh, over-the-counter things like megasporbotic or fluorosis or fluorophage, uh, flowers of sulfur, uh, constipation versus diarrhea. I think the people that tend to have diarrhea need them more than people with constipation. So the penicillins, the macrolides, tetracyclines, doses around 50 to 250 milligrams probably for penicillin, um, the macrolides, and tetracycline. And then doxycycline and minocycline need smaller doses. Using vitamin K always uh, in olive oil, preferably. Dissolving them in your mouth before swallowing. Uh, they can lower the blood sugar, possibly. I've experienced that. I don't know if other people experience it as well. And then uh, using them for probably two or three weeks. So that's everything I know about antibiotics. So if you guys have experiences uh, uh, down below, I'd love to hear them. And I uh, really appreciate you guys. Tons of people are signing up for the Substack, And so I think I might uh, make these an exclusive for the people, an exclusive for a, a period of time, because I'm so appreciative of the people that are subscribing to the Substack. That means so much to me. So really appreciate you guys. You guys are coming out of the woodwork to support this show. And it means a lot to me. And I'm very happy. So uh, thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you guys soon and peace out. Thank you.